Hey, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge M630 Blade Server and specifically we're going to do an overview of the memory and CPUs. Let's get rolling. Well, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge M630. If you find anything useful in today's video, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's start with the uh, CPUs. There are two CPUs inside. It's a LGA 2011 3 socket, which means it uses Intel Xeon E5 2600 V3 or V4 series CPUs. Uh, people ask us, what do we recommend as far as CPUs? It kind of depends on your application. If you're looking for just like a low end application, uh, one of my go-to's is the e, uh, E5 2620V3 or the E5 2630V3. These are uh, relatively inexpensive nowadays, uh, and you can load up two of them for uh, you know a good price point. If you're looking for a higher end application, uh, one of my go-to's is the E5 2680V4. Uh, it, you can go higher, you know, E5 2690, 95, 99. I mean, there's a bunch of different good ones, uh, but as far as not you know breaking the bank, the E5 2680V4 seems to be one of the best processors out there on a, a price standpoint while still getting a, a you know great return on performance so uh, that's my go-to there uh, is regarding the memory uh, there's uh, 24 dim slots inside it takes DDR4 memory uh, you can use a number of different speeds. You can use 2133, you can use 2400, or you can use 2666. I will note, though, if you do put in 2666, it's going to clock down. Uh, and people ask, well, why would you put in 2666? Well, I just tell people that just in case you had some RAM laying around uh, and you wanted to put it into this system, you can use that. Or if for some reason you can get it for the exact same price as the 2400, you might as well get the 2666 because maybe down the line you can use it for something else, right? Uh, but in general, if you're buying right now, now the 2400 is going to be the uh, the max top of the line as far as speed is concerned so there's no point in, in spending extra money if it's going to cost more right so all right now the sizes you can go 4 gig 8 gig 16 gig 32 gig or all the way up to 64 gig but there's a key for the 64 gig and that's the type of ram that you use which which will get to the types there's two types of ram you can use ecc registered also known as rdim or you can use load reduced memory known as lrdim with ecc registered you can max out using 24 uh, 32 gigabytes that's the most that you can get whereas with um, and, and then the speed would be 2400 megahertz of course uh, with load reduce however you get twice the scalability and you can put in 2464 gigabytes and that's where the 64 gigs come in is you can only use them with load reduced memory and again at 2400 megahertz so uh, that's your your max for uh, both types of RAM now that we know a little bit more about the memory and CPUs hey let's hop inside and learn how to actually configure this thing uh, but before we do I'm gonna grab my ESD gear because you never want to be inside without some sort of protection so I'll be right back all right now that we've got our ESD gear on we're safe to open the machine up so you're just gonna push right here and pull back one thing I did want to note uh, the top of this um, and hopefully I get this in good uh, has a nice little diagram here that shows you uh, the, uh, the the memory channels as well as CPU 1 versus CPU 2 so uh, and there's also another nice diagram over here um, that shows you some uh, additional information. So uh, that's one thing I always like when uh, the manufacturer, uh, who, whether that's Dell or HPE or Supermicro, I always like it when they uh, give us some of that information. It just makes it a little bit more convenient. So anyhow, all right, so as we discussed, there are two CPUs. CPU 1 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here. CPU 2 controls the 12 DIMM slots over here. Um, you might notice when you're looking at this, you go, wait a second, those heat sinks look a little bit long and I can only uh, put DIMMs in 20 slots and you are you are correct and that is um, an issue that some people run into with this machine and it depends solely on the CPUs. Now the CPUs that were in here uh, were what they, I believe they're E5 26 uh, I think they were 99 before. So they may have been 95, but either way, whatever they were, they were either 135 watt or they were 145 watt. And so basically, there's two types of heat sinks for this machine. You have the 60, uh, 68 millimeter, and if you use the 68 millimeter, that means you're using a CPU in there that has 120 watts or less. Okay, but as soon as you go over that 120 watt threshold and you get to like 135, 145, you need to use the second CPU, which is the 86 millimeter, which is what this has right here. If that is the case, then the max goes down as far as your configuration because you can only use uh, 20 of the dim slots. As you can see, it's blocking uh, the the uh, last slot on each one of the uh, of the final channel. So, um, 
That being said, I wanted to note that in advance uh, because that is a, a pretty common issue that we see, and that is actually uh, an issue for this one right here because it's a more of a performance uh, CPU that's in here, um, so you can only put it in, in 20 total. Uh, for what we're actually doing, it doesn't matter because we're not fully maxing this out. As we discussed earlier, you could put in you know 1.5 terabytes with uh, load reducer. You could put in 768 with you know EC register. We're not going to do anything like that with this. We're actually only going to be putting... Um, uh, what what is the total here? We're putting in uh, 16, uh, 32 gigs. That's that's what our customer asked for. So um, so let's go ahead and get started. One of the first things I always tell people um, when you get rolling, I always like to open the tabs for anything that are for any of the modules that I'm putting in or any of the slots that I'm putting modules into. Okay, so that's going to be all the black and the whites. Okay, so all the blacks and the whites are the first and the second. Uh, slot of each channel so we are going to open all those up in fact you know what? we kind of glossed over the channels um, so let's talk about the channels before we start the install so CPU 1 controls the 12 dim slots over here within the 12, uh, 12, 12 dim slots there are four memory channels and each memory channel has three dims per channel and this is kind of key that whole three dims per channel um, because the uh, the last slot is basically subject to the rank rule, uh, which is uh, an issue that you that you can run into. So we're not going to get too deep into that, uh, but we're just going to go ahead and uh, focus on the install. And I just want to kind of point out the channels. So over here uh, is going to uh, be A3 right here. This is A4. And if you come back over here, you have A1, A2. So you just if you're putting say four uh, four dims, it'd be A1, A2, A3, and A4. And then you come back over here, and it's going to be the same thing. You're going to have uh, B1 over here the white dim slot, uh, B2, then you're going to come back to the outside, B3, and B4, okay? Um, so those are the starts of each channel, so if you were getting only installing, you know, four or eight dims, uh, you'd put them in all the whites. Uh, as soon as you go to 16, like we're doing, you're going to put them in all the whites and the blacks, okay? And then I do want to note, when we get to the second CPU to install, we are going to have to remove this. Well, let me rephrase that. You can't really remove this because of the, the ribbon cable, but we are going to have to lift this up so that we can get a little bit better access, and we're going to kind of gingerly set it up here. So I'll show you that in a second. Uh, but before we continue to get going, like I said, I like to open all the tabs up, make it nice and easy so we're not fumbling around. Um, and then two, you, and this is even more important, there is a notch right here also known as the key. This key is really important because you have to line the module up. It's not perfectly in the center. So you need to line the module up with the notch that is sticking out of the, uh, of the dim slot. If you don't, you have the potential of damaging the dim or damaging the dim slot, which could mean you have to replace the whole motherboard or the whole blade. These aren't good uh, problems to run into, so just make sure you line it up properly. It's a very, very simple thing. So I'm going to come over here, and I know this is A3, but we're going to start here on A3. Now, one of the things I also like to note, look, the module's in. I'm not holding the module. Uh, all is good as far as the module is in there, but it's not fully seated. Okay, so you need to hear these two clicks right here. Click one, click two. Now the module is fully seated. And you can also tell, you see how the black tab is sticking out and the white tab is in? That's because the white tab um, is, has closed in on the notch and taken the leads and fully inserted it into the dim slot. And that's really what you need so that you can make sure that the module is registered. Okay, so as we discussed, we're now skipping the green slot because uh, we're only putting in 16. And since we're only putting in 16 and not fully maxing it out, um, we need to make sure that we're utilizing our channels properly because if we were to overload a few channels and then leave a few channels empty, then you don't have the proper balance and you're not getting the maximum performance, okay? So, uh, and, that, and that's why you do it. People ask, why do we do that? Uh, it's really simple. You just wanna get the most out of your M630 as possible. So it's all about performance. That's, I mean, that's what we're after here. So, all right, so we're just gonna keep rolling, putting them in the, the white and the black to start the first two of the channel and skip the green okay and you can see this is a relatively fast process I'm doing it as I'm talking uh, and we're knocking it out here in a couple of minutes um, if I was fully focused without doing a video it would be even faster um, so if you're if you're wondering how long this takes and you're thinking about doing it I mean honestly it's it's a super simple process uh, that doesn't take a ton of time so alright now we're coming over here to CPU 2 uh, for CPU 2 you're going to have to push right here on these two blue tabs and gingerly lift this up. Now, again, this ribbon cable is connected, 
so you need to kind of set it right here where it's not falling down and I, I personally I don't like this feature but it is what it is uh, so you just need to know that this is a situation and be careful so now I'm going to come in here and open the white and the blacks as we discussed because I like to have them open and ready to go when I come to install them See, and there it is that's why you have to be careful you don't want this thing to, to fall down and it's just even a little vibration is making this thing fall so I'm probably going to end up having to hold it with one hand here in a second just to be safe because uh, it's not an ideal scenario so uh, all right now again you need to line this up perfectly so on this side it's going to be like this so I'm going to slide in here and hopefully not hit the ribbon too much all right now we're going to pop this in here are the clicks okay and then we're going to do this black one right here and so what I'm actually going to do is just because of this, I'm going to just insert them in, and I can come back in and push them in a second, so that way I can kind of speed the process up. don't normally recommend doing this, but in this case, with this specific blade, it's not a terrible decision, because you want to be as safe as you can. And I will note that as far as the way you line it up, it flips on this side over here versus this side over here, okay? So again, just lining them up in the blacks and the whites, skipping the greens. Got one last one, and we are almost, almost done. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and just start popping these bad boys down. And you're going to want to hear the two clicks pretty much over and over. Okay. So just like that, we got 16 installed, and now I'm going to put this back on, and you'll hear two more clicks here, and boom, we're done. And again, it's just a matter of, you know, lining up your modules properly and installing them in the right point of the channel. It's honestly, it's very easy, uh, and videos like this on YouTube make it even that much easier, right? So, all right, let's go ahead and close it up and call it a day. So if you made it this far in the video, hey, do us a favor and click that like and smash that subscribe. Uh, we greatly appreciate all of our followers. Uh, and if you're looking for any upgrades for your Dell PowerEdge M630, please do reach out to sales at cloudninja.com. That's sales at cloudninja.com. I mean, we have a ton of uh, different sizes and speeds, and we'd love the opportunity to win your business. So thanks for your time today. Have a great day.